You can tell by the smell, quote, Barker said. They left one by one. Ronson, then Barker, then Tucker. T- David, Tucker never gave them David that. didn't say you could tell by the smell. I thought I heard you say that. I don't, I, I, David's not the sort to say something like that. Uh, the sort of demeanor you could tell. Did, did you say smell? I thought I heard you say that. I, you forgot. <laughs> but it's okay. You said demeanor if you wanted to say demeanor. Later, in a quiet moment, I telephoned the British Embassy and asked them to call the Caesar Park and tell them we were nothing to do with Big Jim Tucker and if they wanted to intimidate him, we were perfectly willing to turn a blind eye because he was nothing to do with us. Well, like we've done a day's work, fellas. Through all of this, the slither of plastic remained where it was. Perhaps they'd taken a look around and put the slither back where they'd found it. I slept fitfully that night, but nothing happened. We are approaching the scene of the crime again. Thursday. This was the day Jim said the limousines would arrive. Yeah, they're sealed up, but I don't see any reporters. If I still had my doubts, Jim said, today was the day I'd know that the world was nothing like they said it was. A five-hour wait followed. Nothing happened. Even Jim began to seem unsure. I was having doubts. For instance, why would the secret rulers of the world allow a tourist bus into their cabal? But how come they just let a coach party in? Could it be some Bilberg personal staff, like their own private cooks, valets, whatever? But Brendan, the photographer from the Weekly News, later said he saw something on the coach that froze him to the spot. I expected the people inside the bus to be waiters, cleaning staff. Um, as the bus drove in, I focused on one person and he was staring at me. He surveyed me. It looked like he was staring right through me. And um, actually looking down, it looked like he was looking down on me. And I realized that it was Peter Mandelson. And you're but sure it, it was Peter Mandelson? I am 100% sure it was Peter Mandelson, yes. Yeah. It was a strange stare. It was a different type of stare. It was as if he was the only person in that bus. Everybody was looking forward and he turned sideways and go slowly, slowly, slowly. Yeah, it was remarkable. It really was. Yeah. <laughs> it's a chilling tale. Yeah, chilling tale. Then, incredibly, at 5 p.m., something began to happen. Later, I managed to get a copy of the guest list, the names of the men who really did roll past us up the drive of the Caesar Park that day. There was Umberto Agnelli, chairman of Fiat. There was Paul Allaire, chairman of Xerox. There was Conrad Black, chairman of the Daily Telegraph. There was Kenneth Clark. There was Donald Graham, publisher of the Washington Post. There was Richard Holbrook, ambassador to the United Nations. There was Henry Kissinger. There was Peter Mandelson. There was William McDonough, president of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. There were CEOs of Nokia and Smith Klein Beecham. There was David Rockefeller, chairman of the Chase Manhattan Bank. There was Robert Shapiro, CEO of Monsanto. And there was James Wolfenson, president of the World Bank. They're inside the scene of the crime now, planning the crimes. It seemed that Jim had stumbled onto something extraordinary. It seemed that Jim was right. Tonight they drink and be merry. Tomorrow they start their evil work. Later that night, Jim announced he was calling off the midnight penetration. You can't get lung cancer without working at it. But it's, uh, it's, maybe it's just an emotional thing that I feel like I ought to try every year. It was sad to realize that tobacco industry directors were inside the Caesar Park, and it was Jim's 60 a day habit, his bad health, that had put pay to the midnight penetration. Later, back in Washington, Jim told me something extraordinary about the one time he met Henry Kissinger. So at this moment, I'm saying to him, uh, Dr. Kissinger, 
at the Bilderberg meeting near Innsbruck, Austria last June, you said this, and this other man said that. Who was that other man? For a moment, he forgot to affect his German accent. His first reaction was, well, that, that is a private meeting. He checked himself. That was a private meeting, or, assuming his German accent. The boy's been here since he was 14 years old. Could this be true? Could Henry Kissinger really have spent his life adopting a fake German accent to camouflage his American one? And if so, why? That was a private meeting. A private meeting. That was a private meeting. A private meeting. I was beginning to find it no longer possible to judge what was true and what wasn't. I needed to regain some rationality. And then I began to notice little things scattered around the spotlight office. I decided to check the spotlight's credentials with the Anti-Defamation League, the world's most powerful Jewish defence organisation. The ADL's job is to determine who is and who isn't an anti-Semite. What do you know about Jim Tucker and the spotlight? The spotlight is the leading anti-Semitic uh, pub propaganda organ in the United States. Its editorial policy is very anti-Semitic and racist. And of course, with Spotlight, all of the conspiracy theories usually circle back in upon themselves to uh, the Jews. David and I went to Portugal with, with Jim Tucker because he told us about the Bilderberg. He said that they were the secret rulers of the world. But, and I had no idea about what you're saying about Jim. I find it really utterly ludicrous that anyone could see them as the center of a world uh, conspiracy, a worldwide conspiracy. The Bilderbergers have been getting together for a large number of years. There's nothing in the public record that shows that they have any control whatsoever on governments. Just like Jim, Gail was portraying the events that occurred in Portugal as a battle between good and evil, except that in her version, the man chasing us was not the dangerous one. The evil man was sitting in my own back seat. Looks like we have a waiting game here. I think Gail felt I'd been to a dark place. I'd allowed myself to be beguiled by racist conspiracy theorists. I'd allowed myself to see our world through their eyes. I think that if you read their materials, you'll find that although they don't say that the Bilderberg conspiracy is a Jewish conspiracy, they like to throw in enough Jewish names so it becomes clear to the average reader or respondent that that's at the bottom of what they believe. I didn't know what to think. Had Jim been using code words all this time? Was Jim being clever? They said that you were the uh, leading anti-Semitic publication in America. They said we're number one? I told you if you stuck by me, we'd go places. <laughs> Did you any evidence? Mm -hmm. they, said that, um, they said that when you talk about Bilderberg, you pay special attention to the Jewish members of Bilderberg. David Rockefeller is a Baptist just like me. Well, maybe not exactly like me, but he's a Baptist. He's not Jewish. Uh, if you think about it, I suppose Rothschilds might be Jewish, but I never thought about it. I spelled their name right. You've seen our Bilderberg coverage. Um, I would challenge the Anti-Defamation League or any of our readers to open our Bilderberg coverage and point out these, um, are they suggesting these are anti-Semitic slurs? They kind of say that you talk in code. When you say international bankers, you mean Jews. Oh, that uh, nonsense. Some screwball invented that some years ago. If you're in favor of law and order, that's a code word for racism. Uh, those jackasses try to put a chill on free speech by intimidating you. If you don't agree with the cliches I dictate to you, you're a racist. And you're supposed to cringe and say, oh, I'll agree with you. Don't call me a racist. Don't throw me in the briar patch. If I want to say Jew, I'll say Jew. If I want to say international banker or international financier, I will say international banker or international financier. But how could anyone, the ADL or the Spotlight, consider Bilderberg to be a Jewish issue? Hardly any of the Bilderbergers are Jews. This really should disqualify them from being a Jewish conspiracy. 
But maybe the absence of actual Jews doesn't matter to the spotlight. Maybe Bilderberg is code for the old mythology of the shadowy Jewish cabal out to enslave the world. Frequently they refer to Jews as international financiers or they talk about um, that strange group behind the media or they talk about um, bankers or they talk about um, people who are uh, culture manipulators, the middlemen, you know, the middlemen in New York, the New Yorkers who are causing the prices to rise so that they can put it in their pockets, but not in yours. I didn't know what to make of Gail's list of code words. Some of those phrases didn't sound to me like anti-Semitic slurs, and I remembered what conspiracy theorists had said to me about the ADL. Any of us that are working to stop the New World Order, we're their enemies, and the best thing they can call us is anti-Semite, because then the whole world hates us. You say, anti-Semite, oh, that's the next thing towards Satan himself. I mean, that's like calling you Satan. They're a brush that the establishment uses to paint people black.